Today on Toxedia, we're going to discuss how one trucking company gets bought out by another trucking company. What changes, if any, really affect the truck driver when their company's being bought out? Also, a truck driver was doing some filming, and guess who showed up? SWAT and the cops. What happened to that trucker? All that and more on today's Toxedia. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Hey drivers, are you thinking about becoming a lease operator? Well, NCI is leasing out one to two year old Kenworth T680 double bunk condo tractors, fully loaded with APU and fridge. Plus, the company is owned by their own product. That's right, they deliver mainly their own freight, which means your business will be thriving for a long time to come. 844 311 7076. That's 844 311 7076 and tell them Talk CDL sent you. Please, thank you. Hey, truck drivers, I want to talk to you real quick about an invention that was invented by a trucker for truckers. It's a tool called Magnus Stop. Basically, if you want to slide your axles hassle-free without needing any help, it's a little four by five inch tool. It utilizes a pin and a magnet. Crazy simple. I'm surprised nobody ever invented it before. Anyways, you merely stop, get out, pull your pin, Put your Magnus Stop device in the hole right beside the hole you want it to stop at. Then you either pull forward or you back up. Magnus Stop stops you exactly where you need to be stopped every single time. It's durable. It's very affordable. It's $49.95. If you mention Talk CDL online in the promo code, you get $10 off. So it's now only $39.95 for Talk CDL viewers which is an awesome, awesome deal. Magnus Stop is the tool you need today, and you can get it at magnusstop.online. That's M-A-G-N-A-S-T-O-P dot online. Check it out and let us know here at Talk CDL how that product is working out for you. Thank you. Oh, and it's also free shipping and handling. It doesn't get any better than that. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Did you know that um, Heartland bought out Millis? Well, hold on a second before we go to that. Let me go back to what you just said. You said pretty much everybody knows all the news. No, they don't. Some do. No, they, Ruthann, do you realize Talk CDL has over 300,000 people on their page? And then, like, say, for example, Twisted Trucker has, like, a million. And then CDL Life has, like, 400,000. Like, everybody has different people. And if you share, everybody shares the same story. Everybody gets, like, these huge numbers. Why is that? Well, it's because... Ev- not everybody knew that article. Okay. So you don't have to say, oh, I'm going to just give you something you already know. Did you know that Heartland bought out M- Millis? I didn't know that. Oh, okay. When did Heartland buy, buy out Millis? The, um, at last year. Well, not last year, but last month. Really? That's, yeah. that's something, you know, and, and, and again, look, I, I, I know Millis was a decent company. I'm not saying that they're not now that they're owned by Heartland. I'm just saying that it's funny how, trucking companies get sucked up by the bigger ones, you know, um, talk to me, who's running Millis. Is it still going to run under Millis or are they just going to suck it all in and let it be heartland? It's all heartland now. So Millis sold everything. Well, I know, but a lot of times and I can give you some trucking company examples. Okay. Where a company absorbs another company, but they still are operating under their name. There's tons of them out there that are owned by somebody and they're still operating under their old name. Well, when they, a lot of times when a company buys out another mm-hmm. company, they bought the name too. It has nothing to do with well, yeah, I know ownership I mean, of that. So they'll let it still ride because the DOT name or um, tax purposes or stuff with the entity, it's easier to keep them separated than to merge them completely well, underneath it, the same umbrella name. The, but that's a, that's a bullshit reason. Actually, you, if you want the truth, you want, I'm going to tell you one of the real reasons is, because they don't want to lose all their drivers to the bigger mama company. Because what happens is a lot of times when a trucking company gets taken over by a bigger corporation, it scares off a lot of their drivers. So therefore, a lot of them will stay running under same exact management and operating just that the new company is now getting more customers and more freight out of that company. But usually the drivers still keep the same wage until... 
And this is the big thing. This is where it kills a lot of these companies because I've seen it happen a million times. The drivers are told, hey, you're, you're, you're being bought out. Let, let's use the one that you have, for example, right now, Heartland. You're being bought out by Heartland. And then, of course, all the drivers are going, oh, what does that mean to us, man? We're now going to be Heartland drivers. You know, we're going to be dispatched by Heartland, and, 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 and now we're not going to be getting the uh, type of runs or we're going to lose our dedicated runs and all this other stuff. I'm not kidding you. I'm just, just an example. I've seen this happen a billion times, okay? And so what happens is, at first, not a lot of shock, okay? But then what happens is, all of a sudden, the mother company starts saying, well, we could be doing it for less. We could be, we could be hauling that freight for less. Or we could be doing it better than the little company was doing. And now all of a sudden, they start taking over the mother. The par- In this case, it would be Heartland. Now they start taking over the Heartland guidance. And, of course, the drivers at Millis don't like that. And they end up they end up bolting. I'm not kidding you. That happens so much. It's crazy. Maybe with some situations, you could be partially correct on that. But I don't believe you're 100 percent correct on that. I do believe that it has a lot to do with the business aspect of why they would keep it separate, not just the driver. It you know incidences because. You know, there's plenty of companies that have done that and left it the way it is because it is smarter to do it as a business to have it underneath different names because of the write-offs and and the customers and everything. It's not just to please the driver and say that the, you know, the driver, they don't want to lose the driver because in this incident, they said how much they think that the, we are impressed with the high quality of driving professionals and the organization safety profile. So Millis got a really good pat on the back of how great the drivers were there. So I don't think they're just keeping any of that. And I don't know if they're going to keep running underneath the name Millis because it didn't say. Well, and, and I'm really basically saying the same thing. I'm just saying at first that's the big scare. And then it does. So much starts changing. Well, put it this way. If you just acquired a company, mm-hmm. right, first of all, they bought the company. They bought Millis for $150 million. Okay. Last year, their revenue was $152 million. But what they also did is took on all their debt and said that they're going to pay off everything. So they assumed all their debt so that Millis wouldn't have to claim bankruptcy or worry about that anymore. Why and was Millis even thinking of bankruptcy? Were they in trouble? I'm just saying when you acquire someone else's debt. Right. It's for a reason. Okay. You know, you don't sell your company and and take that debt with it. You, they bought that, and then they also gave Millis a hundred or I'm sorry, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in Heartland stock. So they bought them for a really good, pretty penny when it comes to adding everything up. So I'm assuming because Millis was family owned that they were just wanting to get out of it completely. Yeah, but normally they'll have to. And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Don't roll your eyes. I'm, I'm just telling you based on what I've seen over the years, how many times did you see, like, for example, look at Schaefer and Sunflower. Remember that merger? Oh, nothing's going to change. Oh, nothing's going to change. And boom, they became Schaefer drivers. It's exactly what happens every I'm not saying that doesn't happen at all. I'm not saying that at all. There's a lot of companies that do that instead of keeping them, you know, separate. But if you want to use Schaefer as an example, you have Schaefer, you have Hunt, you have, what's the other one that they, there's like four different parts of Schaefer, isn't there? Yeah. So, I mean, they didn't, they they bought them out, but they kept them separate. Now, if you want to go with a different one. But they didn't keep them separate. XBO, XBO bought them out and they turned everything XBO, correct? So I'm I'm saying, I I do understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that not everyone, I'm, I'm having a. Oh, actually every. Everyone. Not there's actually zero. Okay. When you say not everyone, I'm saying every single one does eventually take over that other company and they start running it their way. Well, if they run it their way and they're buying it, the, re- the reason they're running it their way because the way that the, co- they the own owner, it. well, not only that, but they they're successful enough to run it their way. Right, but you I see, mean, if, if the con- owner was selling the company because they needed to get out of it for whatever reason, but that, that doesn't say that either. You're just putting words in someone's mouth there when you say when you when you're trying to surmise why they did it. I'm, I I didn't say that. I didn't even say specifically this company. I said if a company is selling because mm-hmm. they have to get out of it, 
meaning that the company was going under. Yeah, well, that's not this one because you just said they made $152 million in revenue last year. I didn't say this one. Okay, well, why are we talking about something else then? I'm talking about this this particular... Well, then why did you shove Schaefer in it? Because they're the same comparison. Well, then I was trying to make a comparison too. Yeah, but your comparison's out in like some foggy land that nobody's ever seen. No, you cut me off too many times. You don't even know what I'm trying to say. Well, I say welcome to the world of Ruth Ann's um, way of communicating and and getting a point across all i'm trying to say in simple terms is at first it doesn't sound like a big deal to most trucking companies but usually the trucking company that's being bought out ends up ends up being dictated which of course they have the right to because they own it i get that but all i'm saying is my heart goes out to those drivers that were millis drivers all those years and i'm not putting heartland down but look if you compare it most truck drivers that are experienced would rather a company with only a couple hundred trucks versus the couple thousand trucks okay what how many trucks did millis have do you have that right there yeah give me a minute Oh, you didn't. Okay. Well, I know I didn't go up right up to it, but I got I. There's a whole bunch of they gave the whole breakdown that like yeah, I know of all the what they had. Let's hear it. No. Why? Because I'm getting to it. <laughs> See, there's Ruth Ann's reasoning again. Get Ruth Ann, tell hey, us. My no. reasoning. Why aren't you going to tell us? Because I'm getting uh, I'm getting to it. <laughs> I'm like uh, now the world knows me and my mind. That's why my brain is okay. Loose. According to the FMCSA. Millis has approximately 840 drivers and 850 power units. I didn't even think they had that many. There I thought you it was go. Like three, four. Okay, well, how many does Heartland have? Like 5,000? Yeah. I don't know. That didn't tell it, me that. It doesn't say that? Mm-mm. Well, you can pull that up. I can pull it up in five seconds. I'll mm-hmm. tell you exactly what Heartland has. In yeah, I mean, it gave some some different stats there, but what I but you're sounding foolish because... If someone bought a company, no duh, they're going to run it their way. Maybe not right in the very beginning, because in the very beginning, they have to make a transition, but they're not going to fire everybody unless they... The pe- be, I never said they'll fire anybody, Ruth. I didn't say you did. Well, then... Okay. Well, I don't know why you would say that then. Because you made a stupid comment saying, oh, every company that buys out another, they're eventually going to go and turn it their way. Well, no, duh. Well, if I bought out any company or anybody buys out a company, they're going to eventually switch it over to the way they run things okay. because, and I like get you that. said, they own it. So right. you sounded really stupid starting this well, whole no, little disagreement over something that... I'm not disagreeing. Do you understand? My whole heart goes out to the drivers from the company being bought out. I've seen a lot of drivers displaced by the big mother company and it happens every single time and you can't tell me that every driver at millis right now is going oh my god we just got bought up by a big company that's all i'm trying to basically state and if you're a millis driver you can sure bet it will change there i guarantee it and that's all i'm saying every company that i've ever seen do this it changes for the company that's bought out yes rightfully so because you have new owners i get that but i still feel bad for the drivers getting bought out that's all I'm saying. Yay, the owner at Millis just made a billion dollars. Yay. Good for the effing millionaire, Ruth Ann. All I care about is the trucker. You understand that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. 2,630 units Heartland has. Now they have 34, I guess, with uh, 800 more trucks coming in from Millis. So they're almost doubled, a little over more than doubled. Well, no, triple. No, Eight. you're not Let me finish. Oh, Good. Then what Millis had? No, Millis they're had- triple. 800 into 2,600 goes three. Oh, I thought you said something else. I said 2,600, yeah. I heard 2,000, so I was thinking 1,000 and 1,000. No. You know. no I didn't realize it was 26. I thought it was. Right. They're triple the size, which is not as big as I thought. I thought Heartland had a little more than that, but it's still a big company. Again, no insult towards Heartland. It's just I know what I've seen so many of these poor truckers get bought out by the big company and and. Eventually, those poor guys are looking for other jobs because they are not used to the big jo- Although 800 Trucks is a pretty good-sized trucking company, too. So who knows? Maybe it'll be good for them. And it says that um, Millis was really great with their, you know, they had less than 50% turnover rate. That um, they had a bunch of different locations. Was it one, two, three, four, four or five different terminals that they, they ran out of? Plus, the thing that I don't know if everybody knew... But Millis also owned um, some trucking schools. Yeah. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. They owned 
MTIs. MTI. Yeah. Drive-in operator Millis operates 11 terminal locations and five MTI driver school locations. Yeah. Okay. And and MTI, Millis Transfer Institute. Right. And again, I guarantee you these drivers are being told, hey, nothing's going to change. And you know what? They they really, honestly, some of them might not have some changes because of maybe either seniority or, you know, if there's a really good system that the safety, you know, because they have so many, was it, what did I say, 11 different terminal locations, maybe those terminals themselves, they won't make really many changes to that because it might be very profitable for Heartland to leave it the way it is instead of having someone else come in from a different location. But maybe a location's having it where it's a little bit lower safety or a little bit lower in turnaround. So what they'll do is they'll bring someone from Heartland in to try and show them how it's done type of thing instead of thinking that it's something totally different. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, sometimes it could be a good thing, but I just... I just, my heart goes out to the I think it sucks all the way around because, like you said, the drivers end up getting, you know, crappy end of it. So I don't think that's always good there, but, you know. Yeah, when that came over across the Qualcomm or however they were all all told, Mm -hmm. I guarantee you. And again, I want to keep saying this because I don't really know Heartland. You know what I mean? I'm just not a big, giant trucking company kind of guy myself, okay? But I guarantee you when they seen, it could have been anybody, Schneider, Warner, any one of them that could have bought... Out Millis, I guarantee you, when they seen the message, their faces weren't with big smiles. I guar- guaranteed. I guarantee it also. I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you there. I, I'm pretty positive that, you know, yeah. like you said, Millis, Millis didn't have a bad name out there. As no. far as I know, I never heard anybody say, oh, that Millis company, they suck. I never no. heard that ever. Not at all. And I'm, and, and again, they're, they're one of those companies that did have a decent reputation, mm-hmm. no doubt about it. So we'll see. You know what? We'll do another pod on, on how is it? You know, take Ooh, if we'll we have, have any to, drivers that have been there, yeah, follow yeah. up with us. Yeah, anybody wants to follow up with us, give us a call here in the next couple months and let us know of what and it would be really nice to show people the actual changes that drivers are seeing when they do merge or get bought out with another trucking company. How the differences are, and and again, I've I've seen it a million times. Drivers mm-hmm. have told me mm-hmm. how the little subtle runs got taken away from them, or or you know, we a, a lot of guys, especially that have dedicated runs, right. they lose them. It's it's amazing how all of a sudden, boom, I lost they, that. Well, not only that, but a lot of times they make those drivers go to the bottom of the barrel instead of the seniority that they had with the company. Like there might be a driver that it's been, Millis was a third generation company. Yeah, and. There could be a driver that has been there mostly. I mean, if they had a trucking school, he could have had his whole time driving in with them, period. And he could have, what, maybe 20 years into the company, get bought out by Heartland. And now he's like a new driver with them instead of the seniority of having 20 years under his belt with one company. You know what I mean? And, you know, you bring up a valid point because I have seen where merges happen where you do lose your seniority yeah. and you don't lose your seniority. So that's another good question. Are these drivers at Millis going to lose seniority? You know, here's an, here's another thing. Let's say the Millis guys were getting, um, 401ks, yeah, like really good ones. Exactly. Or med- their medical, or even let's, let's take, for example, their bonuses, bonus programs, or even their vacation pay, anything vacation pay and how many weeks vacation pay do you get per year? And now all of a sudden, well, I was, I was up to six weeks paid vacation by Millis and Heartland said, I a uh, maximum's three weeks. So I just lost three weeks of vacation. pay. you don't know what rules are mm-hmm. going to be instilled there. And a lot of them right now with this announcement, they're all just in a whirlwind right now, hoping, and, and, and they're telling their families, well, we were told nothing's going to change, nothing's gonna, until we heard them assholes on Talk CDL telling us that it's going to change. And you know what, guys? I'm being honest. It's going to change. It's a guarantee going to change because you have new owners. It has to change. Yeah, your paycheck's going to be different. It's not going to have Melissa on it. It's not going to have Heartland. Yeah, well, <laughs> hopefully their paycheck amount won't change. But Lord willing, everything will, will be great for the driver still, and they won't get it really messed up for the rest of their driving career. Right. And and look, I'm sorry I get a little passionate, you know. And you know what? On that, I'm going to say. What's that? They're now pulling out statistics that there is not a driver shortage at all in the industry. Oh, I've seen that BS article. No, they say there's so much of overabundance right now of drivers, but it's the freight that's the shortage. Well, I'm seeing a bit. They're they're talking more about the the retention problem also. Mm -hmm. But, but no, going back to this thing here, 
you know, I really I'm, tried I'm not, to pull it away. I'm not sorry that I get passionate <laughs> about it, but honestly, um, I, I do it. Just it just irks me when the driver is gonna get shafted. Okay, look, move on. What do you got next? All right, we all know that there was a a brake check blitz that was done in June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the stats from it. Yeah, they finally pulled the stats out, and I am actually shocked. <laughs> You're shocked. I'm shocked, oh. guys. Hey, speaking this of isn't shock, new. What's funny? I just read over in the Amazon, they have they found this new six to eight foot electric eel that puts out, I think it's 840 volts. It's now the highest electrocuting uh, beast or animal on the planet. It's capable of killing a human with electricity. Have so, you, did you see that? No, you did. I, I showed you, you told that the me other about, day. No, you didn't let me see it. Well, that's, but I'm you just told saying, speaking it. of shock. But, but here's, what, here's, here's the thing, though. Can wow. you imagine, you know, if, first of all, Places can use that as their source of energy. What's that? Oh, eels. The eels. Yeah, I mean, I mean, think about it. Small what? countries, you know, like places in Africa or something like that. What they do is pull over, you know, make a make a ha, 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 habitable. I, I can't say habitable. That. Thank you. Um, living condition for this this eel, and they could surely find a way to harvest that electric. Ruth, and you tell the world right now, would Troy put eels in our pool and wire them to the house if I could? Yes. <laughs> Come on, let's move on to trucking. All right, go ahead. But I was going to say, what do you, got? you know how we have Sharky? Sharky. Sharky. What do you mean Sharky? That's our, our the name that they've named our, our electric chair up in Stark. Right? Oh, Sharky. Old Sparky. Sparky. Sparky, Sparky, Sparky not, not Sharky. Sharky. Well, <laughs> wacko. Oh, we could do, we could do, Sharky. we could do a mass um, electrocutions for with the eels. It's, it's more humane. <laughs> Old Sharky. Sparky. <laughs> so now we're, we're, we're death by shark. When you come to Florida, don't commit a crime. You get eaten here. Okay, come on. What do we got in trucking? All right, so the blitz that was done, what I'm shocked about is it's not new. It's not a surprise. They tell you what they're going to look for, and what happens? More than 12,000 trucks are sidelined during the 72 hours of the blitz. Over 12,000. Over over breaks? Yeah, it's like, you Uh know what? You've been warned. Why did you even, like, there's nothing else. Troy tells you even to... Take a week vacation that week that it's going to happen. If you don't have your truck up to par, do something else. Don't go out on well, the road. I, well, my suggestion would be to get your truck up to par, too. Did you see Trooper Hoover? He's been We've been sharing his stuff on Talk CDL. And I like, just like the name, Trooper Hoover. Trooper Hoover. <laughs> and, but anyways, he's an Indiana DOT guy. And what he, what he does is he makes positive videos. for, And a lot of times he says, follow the dry powdery rust, right? And And... A lot of times he'll show you how brakes and bolts and stuff like that are out of adjust or loose. And every truck driver, if you guys would watch Talk CDL's uh, videos of the week right now we've been doing, and watch how this trooper shows you how easy it is to spot and detect something that's out of adjust or loose, you guys could save yourself a lot of fines. And you just said 12,000 trucks. Over, over. Were taken out of service in a three-day period. You said right. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, a lot. Twelve thousand and nineteen tractors. But here's another shocker: mm. two thousand seven hundred and eighty-four drivers were placed out of service. So not only were the tractors out of service on twelve thousand of them, but out of those, you know, additional two thousand seven hundred and eighty-four drivers were, for whatever reason, probably something to do with their logs. Uh, there is, e- you know, everything's done e-log. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, whatever it is. Drivers are drivers. Okay. They're right. silly, silly boys and girls. Come on, guys. All right. Let's not lecture them. I'm not. I just said, come on, guys. Come on. What do you got next? Um, A little friendly reminder about the CBD oils. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. It's not 100% no. pot free. Nope, nope, nope. I've seen truckers that are taking taking those CBD oils and putting them under their tongue, and they think they're going to get rid of their pain, and, and they're getting the THC in them. It's what ha- what's happening yeah. is, well, there's one specific driver had this happen to him. He was using the CBD oil for knee pain. Mm. and um, Got a random? He got his random, and he's been driving for 20 years, and what happened was he came up with a positive. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm not doing anything. So he got retested. But 
he, they showed that it was his CBD. They traced it back to it was his CBD oil, and it was supposedly when he bought it. Oh, so he's he. They didn't kick him out of the company then. Well, he was an owner operator, so I don't think they. I don't know exactly. Oh. Exactly how much. I mean, he said it, it could destroy anybody, but I he might have had a little bit more. I seen recently there was a guy in upstate New York that was working for a company. He was a company driver, and he failed it also. And the company that he had been buying the CBD oil, it, it advertised 100% um, THC free. And I don't think that they can do that. I don't think that it could be 100% THC free. No, um, the CBD oil, yeah, it can be. Yeah? Yeah, because it's actually not derived. It's it's the way the purities are. And that's where it will come back with the the, the actual negativity for the drug test in it. It's how pure your actual oil is. And it's probably depending on what you're paying for it, Mm -hmm. you know. So if it's really cheap, yeah, you might flood the drug test. And if you get the munchies after you do it, you guys might want to try to avoid a drug test. Mm -hmm. Right? Would you agree? Uh, A little cotton mouth and get... Not that I know anything about that, but if you get cotton mouth and you get the munchies... And you get really talkative. Yeah, and your eyes are all glossy. Um like you've been it, up all it, night driving? It, yeah, man. It might it might not be THC free. Okay. What they're calling it is actually CBN is what's triggering the false um, positives. Okay. Well, guys, I would my suggestion would be um, until something comes up to where you can maybe get a prescription for it and have the THC in, THC in your in your system or whatever the case is, I just say don't. Don't do it while you're a trucker because even if you live in Colorado and you smoke pot for, you know, on your off time, if you take a piss test when you come back to work and you and you have the, the THC and you are going to lose your job and you can fight and argue all you want. But the bottom line is in, in DOT regulations, you are not allowed to have that in your system at all. Well, here's another thing with the M- FMCSA, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they stated I already closed the the thing, but they did state that, you know, you can't get it with a um, positive result with certain things. But this driver proved that he got the positive result. So the FMCSA was even like trying to say, oh, no, you can't get it from that. Problem was, is if you're going to draw, if you are going to be doing the CBD oils, you need to Google it. You need to investigate it a little bit more before you just say, oh yeah, no, I'm going to go ahead and start using it right away. And the only reasoning is, is because if you're paying for this product, a good one is not cheap and it's also going to be so pure that you're not going to have those results coming up on you. But if you're going to go and not investigate it enough then when you end up getting a positive test result, you have no one to blame but yourself for not being thorough enough to make sure that you didn't get the right stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. No, that's cool. All right. Last but not least. Are we moving on to another subject? Yeah, of course. What do you got? Uh, This, I, I I read this poor guy's thing and I'm like, oh my gosh. So you've heard of people like doing swatting or doing where... Doing what? Okay. When someone's doing a YouTube video, a right. live stream on the YouTube video, right. there's trolls and there's other people that will go and they'll they'll pr- pull pranks on these people. Like they'll call um, one, the, the guy's doing a 20 year prison term for calling when a, one of these guys was doing a YouTube video. He called 911 and said that he had a hostage in his house, this YouTuber. So when the, oh, yeah, when the cop SWAT showed up and came, killed somebody, they killed him, the YouTuber. Yeah, I know. Because of this somebody prank. pr- pranked well, him. Well, that guy that did the prank, he actually got 20 years in prison for it. Oh, really? Yeah. And there's also two more that are on trial right now that they're getting going to get sentenced for doing similar things, too. So it, they take it very seriously anymore because of it. Well, this guy, his name is Keith Lawson. He goes by the. Uh, CB name Pale Rider, right? Well, is he a trucker? Yeah. So I he, knew there had to be something to do with trucking. Yeah. Well, of course. So he's doing his YouTube, right? So he he was doing it at his house this time. He drives for Calark, by the way. For Calark. Fact, right. Yeah. So I heard that name in a while. Yeah, he's leased to Central Hauling Calark. I guess they're a merged company. So anyways, Uh-oh. which one bought the other one out? It's um, going to change, Calark. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good. Nah, okay. So he was saying he's you know always hear of how. Like some people will order 20 pizzas and have them, you know, mm-hmm. delivered or anything. Yeah. Well, he didn't think anything of it because at the time he had his, like a lot of people don't know in social media, if you aren't, 
having your, your privacy settings really good, people can actually trace it right to your home. Mm -hmm. They could trace it wherever you're at at that moment. They can go ahead and trace you. Well, he didn't realize that. So he had his social media logged on for locations. Mm -hmm. Right. So what happened was, is someone called on him and said that he killed his wife. Oh, no sh- there. crap. Yeah. So now the cops show up. So he had, get this, was it four or five officers come on? He's doing his live stream video. He's talking all of a sudden. All of a sudden his dog starts barking and freaking out. He goes, answers the door, and here it's SWAT, right? And they're they're all sitting there, and they're saying, hey, we got this call. You shot your wife. So they're not screaming killed. on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Oh, I don't know. Get your hands in the air. I'll kill you. I no, I'm serious. That's I what don't the cops what, do. They do I know that. what they do, but I don't know what they said to him, but he was still live streaming the whole time. Right? Oh, wow. So now the cops are on the live stream. Yeah. yeah. So what happened was, is they took him outside uh-huh. and he said, I go outside and there's like five cops standing there with the AR 15s pointed at and stuff. Yeah. Wow. Cause it's SWAT. So they came in and they did a clean sweep of the house. And as they're doing the clean sweep, here is computers running with his live stream going on. And the cops <laughs> see themselves on, on YouTube. Yeah. Crap. So they went through all of that, cleared it out. And then the next day he goes to his neighbors and say, Hey, listen, I just wanted to explain the commotion yesterday. This is what happened. I was doing my YouTube video vlogging away and, and they go, Oh no, they're in our yards too. So the SWATs were yeah, hiding out in his neighbor's yard also. Oh, yeah, They'll go up on your, on your neighbor's roof and all yeah. get ready to perch so they can pop you. Well, that's what they're saying is they're, they're all there. So he's like, this is like really, but he, he explained to them that they are, I, th- I think he's saying, you know, see, I'm, I'll be honest with you. That kind of touches a nerve with me. Because, you know, I'm a, I am support the police, but I also don't support the bad police. And believe me, there's enough of them, too. Just like I don't support the bad truckers that are riding people's asses and cutting people off. And, and you know, like, the, like the guy just, what was his name, Jack Satterfield? I, it's like I remember this guy's name. The one that just killed all those people in, in Harrisburg, drunk in his tractor trailer. I don't support bad truckers. Okay, but I don't support the bad police either. And I want to tell you something. When these cops show up and they don't have the decency to check things out before they have their guns drawn out because somebody somebody called in and said, this guy just killed somebody and blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm going to tell you something. That's that's bad policing. And And see, that other guy that was killed, I remember seeing the video. That happened over a year ago maybe even two years ago, where some dumbass called, like you said, and said, this guy just murdered somebody. He's at his house, blah, blah, blah. Well, they show up. Instead of, I remember it was at night. They were they had all their guns out. They're in the yard. They're screaming at this guy to get on the ground. And they're at the end of the yard to where the guy does He really can't hear. The guy don't have a gun. The guy don't have nothing. And they blow him away because, you know what, they're over, every time their excuse is this. I thought he was reaching for something. I thought he had a weapon. And I'm going to tell you something. That irks the crap out of me when I see somebody's life getting wasted over that every single time. And I'm, again, I'm not I'm not against police in any way, but that don't you think that that's almost a perfect example of of hey guys we should have checked it out. How about even picking up the phone for a second when you get to the house, call their number and go, hey, listen, we got a report. We're already out here. Your house is surrounded. If you are innocent of this, no one's going to shoot you. Just come on outside and, and keep your hands in the air. Talk to them in a decent way. When you start freaking out at people and going, get your hands on the ground. We're going to blow your head off. When they start doing that, people panic. Oh, my God, can you imagine if somebody all of a sudden started freaking screaming in my face with a gun pointed at me? I'd be like, what the hell's going on? I might actually lift my hand the wrong way and get shot. I'm just saying there's got to be a new protocol into approaching people that you think in any way. I don't care. All right. If he's a bad guy, blow his head off. I'm for I'm for that, too. I don't want to see a cop get shot. But my gosh, a report. From somebody, an eyewitness liar on the phone, come on. That's me. I'm rattling. And I hope nobody thinks that I'm against cops because I'm not. No. Against the bad ones. The ones that pull their gun out and go, get on the ground. I, I can't stand that. 
I can't stand that. I know. You play those videos while I'm like trying to calm I've down. I've seen old ladies. I've seen it to where it was an old lady or some guy that's very helpless. And they're screaming in their face. And, and to get on the ground, the people can't hear right. They just had one on not long ago where this guy was having a a uh, some kind of a seizure. And so the cops walk up to his window and they're pointing a gun, screaming in his face. The guy's like in, in a, half in a coma. They drag him out. He ends up dying. He ends up dying because they think he's not complying with them. So I'm just saying. Now, the bad guys do deserve to have their heads blown off. I get that. But, my gosh, we got to protect the citizens that aren't aren't understanding what's going well, I on. Think, I think a lot. How are we talking about cops? Because you. Oh, sorry. I think with, uh, with, with today's society, there has been such a shift in doing things properly that anymore people don't even there's like police officers you have the ones that still want to do everything by the book do it all correctly a lot of good cops doing it all nice and and fair but then you have those ones like you're saying the bad ones they're just so fed up with the people that are trashing them and 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 killing them that they're just instead of going on a vacation and getting it out their system, they're going and taking it out on, on, citizens. on citizens. But yeah. the problem is is those citizens that are the troublemakers that have got them at that point, they're the ones that need to get more looked at too. I'm tired of that also. Well, I'm, I'm tired, sick and of, tired all of, of some. Like, I've seen videos where a cop just innocently is walking up to say, hey, let me see your driver's license and get shot. I get that too. I see why they're or, itchy. I see why they can be itchy and edgy also. But I'm just saying there's got to be a different approach to like that scenario you just said happen to that trucker. Well, everything went SWAT. great. He he the SWAT still showed up because someone called and said that he killed his wife while he was doing this. But they had AR15s pointed at him. At it's him. SWAT. What do you think they're going to have? Little tiny 9 millimeters? Or wait, are they going to take my Taurus 22? I, no. I, I get I get that. But don't you think once the guy comes out in the yard, you can see he doesn't have a gun on you. He, you, you can drop the guns. You don't have to keep them. What if one goes off? What makes you think they didn't? Because he just said, well, I was standing out there. They had all these AR-14s or 15s. When whatever. he walked out, he's seen them. Oh, okay. Hey, again, I, I don't want this to come off. See, I... I I am not in any way against police. I just want you to know that. It's the bad ones, just like the bad truckers. That's me. I'm in a mood today. You've been in a mood for a week. Yeah. Whatever. What's funny is Mr. Lawson said his wife actually wasn't at home. He goes, a good thing. She would have probably had been the one nearest to the door, and she would have probably had a heart attack had she been there. Opening the door and seeing all the cops there, she probably would have had a heart attack, he said. Hey, what if that guy's dog would have ran out barking? The dog could have been shot. I'm just saying, all because some jackass called that in like that. Mm-hmm. I'm just, well, and here's the thing. that he said, good he's it from, ended nice. He's from Arkansas, by the way. So this happened in Arkansas, and the cops there, he's telling, you know, he told everybody he's they're taking it very seriously, and they're still searching that there's investigation going on to find out who made that actual call, because they... What happens is when they pull all the, you know, when they they go and get all the gear together, they go and waste their time, energy, gas, whatever you want to call it, all mm-hmm. this stuff to go to a fake call. Mm-hmm. Someone's got to take a consequence for doing that because oh, yeah. if there was an actual call at the same time, a truthful one, they would then have to figure, you know, try and split it up and, and who knows what kind of outcome it would have been. They're trying to really buckle down on the on the the ignorant people out there that want to just have fun and yeah. not think of the consequences. But you know, anyways, if you want to see anything, you might be able to find the the video still on mm. uh, Keith's website. It, he goes, it's Pale Rider TV on YouTube. You might be able to find them. All right. And, and again, I'm just going to say this one more time. I'm not against the good cops. I support cops. But as you were saying that, I'm thinking to myself, that guy that got killed last year. When the cop showed up, it's a perfect example of it was a false call. The guy's mother was inside. He came out on the porch and got blown away because they thought he was reaching for something. All I mean, tell me that situation wasn't handled wrong. My gosh, it's, I'm, there's I'm a perfect it example yeah. of a guy that had nothing to do with crime and you blow him away. Now, this the trucker at least was not. You see what I'm saying? Again, I'm just I'm rattling on, but I'm against anybody that does wrong. 
I mean it. Even when I do wrong. Sometimes. You got anything else? Mm-mm. No? Mm-mm. You got any advice? Don't get on Troy's bad side. Oh. <laughs> I don't think anybody cares. <laughs> My advice is follow the dry powdery rust. That's what Trooper Hoover says. You guys, start looking at your brakes. Start stooping down and looking in the back. Start looking at your brake lines. You see a trail of rust. That means there's something loose. That's all it really means. Well, here's the Follow thing. Follow it. If, Tighten it up. If, guys. if for whatever reason you know there's something wrong, you're doing your pre-trip. You should be doing your pre and your post. If you see that something is wrong, get taken care of. If the company's not going to do it, if it's a company that's too small that they, you know, they can't do it, then you should really be responsible enough to do it because it's your tractor that you're driving, your trailer that you're doing. Oh, here comes the sneeze. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> you hid you hid the punch in the gut sneeze. She did it like a little regular sneeze for no, you people. No, I didn't. I always sneeze that oh, way. That's funny. So, anyway, everybody else gets the soft sneeze. Yeah, I always sneeze like I just sneezed. You did. I do too. Such a BSer. I am not. Wow. But what I'm trying to point out is there was twelve thousand trucks that were put out out of service. That screwed up those drivers' run, their pay. Plus, it cost them money. Exa- Hell, the pay. Hello. Yeah. So, all because they want to say, it's not my job to check that. Well, no. It is your job to check it. If you wouldn't have checked it, you wouldn't have just mm. lost that money. So. And any advice to the Millis drivers? Call us. <laughs> look into the face. Let, of us, let us know if it's a big change. Here, here's my advice, Millis drivers. Look into the face of your brother Heartland drivers. <laughs> That's you, son. I wouldn't no, I honestly That's soon to be you. If you're a Millis driver and you're listening to this and you just gone through this, give us a call in like two months. Let us know what the big changes were. I want to see what your face do a picture. Send your pictures in now and I want to see uh, like what it's like for driving for another company after a couple months. Just to see. And if you were if you work for a company that was bought out like this. Yeah. I would really like to know, hey, yeah, we had these changes or no, we didn't have any really major. But if you were, I want to know this stuff. But here, hold on. If you're bought out, if your trucking company that was bought out recently, we don't want to hear from you. Okay. Except maybe to say hi. We want to hear from you in a year from now. And sometimes it takes a little over a year for things to start changing. And then usually within a couple months, you see the one thing that they have to get adjusted more than anything is, is, is whoever's overseeing it from Heartland. Okay, even though the CEO is probably still staying on to run it for, they probably have an agreement, you know, for the transition and all that other crap. But mark my words, there's going to come a time where they start noticing the changes. Anyway, that's all I got, Ruth Ann. Happy Friday 13th. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> wow. All righty, we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.